Thanks to all of you for being here today. Um, really excited to, to meet a bunch of you during some of these sessions. And uh, I am from Texas, as Brian noted, and, and I'm actually from Austin, Texas. One of the great things about Austin is that in the last 10 years, it's become a really cool city because of South by Southwest. So people assume I'm cool because I'm from Austin, uh, which, which may or not be true, but, uh, but you can assess for yourself. So today I'm going to talk about LinkedIn's content ecosystem. And I'm on the product management team. I'm responsible for all of our marketing solutions products. Those are basically our advertising products. I'm going to give you some insight into how we've evolved LinkedIn to a content platform. I'm also going to talk about some of the product offerings we have to allow you to run content marketing strategies on LinkedIn's platform. So I want to first uh, show a picture of some of our employees at LinkedIn. As you know, our headquarters are in Mountain View, California. One of the things that attracted me to LinkedIn is we have some of the best software engineers in the world, a lot of great software engineers, data scientists. And uh, as a product manager, you want to work with people that can build great products. On our advertising team, which is you know, one of our largest engineering teams in the company, we have a bunch of great folks with backgrounds from, from Google, uh, from Microsoft, from Amazon, from Yahoo, that have worked on some of the top ad tech platforms. You know, and prior to me coming to LinkedIn, I worked at uh, Google for six years on the AdWords system there and, and the display ad offerings for Google. And I've also worked more recently at Groupon for a few years, uh, building out their Silicon Valley office. But another reason I came to LinkedIn, I think the mission is really inspiring. And that's to connect the world's professional, professionals and make them more productive and successful. So when we develop products at LinkedIn, this is something we always think about. We always view products through this lens. Are we building products that are helping our members? And this is true for our marketing solutions products, too. We want them to enhance the, the LinkedIn experience. LinkedIn has grown quite a bit over the last few years. It has over 230 million members. So that's one of every three professionals on the planet are on our platform. You know, every industry is represented, every geography, every job title from intern up to CEO is on our platform. So it's a great platform to reach an audience. And when you think about the original value proposition of LinkedIn, it was connecting talent with opportunity. And as we scaled and got more members on our site, this became a great resource for recruiters. And so we invested a lot of product effort into our recruiting tools and recruiting solutions to let our recruiters go out, find very talented employees that may be passive job seekers who may not be looking for a job but have the right skills and experience. That's still a great mission for us and a great value proposition for our customers. But we've extended that value proposition. And now we're informing, educating, and inspiring professionals. And this really ties into the content strategy. And so I'm going to talk about some of the things that you heard about this morning in a little more depth. But you know, as far as our product efforts, we've really spent a tremendous amount of resources becoming and aspiring to be the definitive publishing platform for professionals on the web. And so you know, job seeking is where most of our user engagement started. But if you look today, professional content consumption is a much bigger portion of our page views to LinkedIn. In fact, it's 6x the volume, right? And this is a huge shift over the last couple of years. And this really speaks to what we've done developing this content ecosystem. So we're not the only professional publishing platform on the web. There's other publishers. I've listed some of them here with some recent comm score numbers. You can see it tops out at about 70 million uniques for some of the largest players. Now let's compare that to LinkedIn. We're now almost 180 million worldwide uniques coming to our site and our mobile apps to engage in content. <coughs> So I'm going to talk about a few trends that really set us apart from the product side. The first is our focus on relevance. So you heard some about this from Dan Roth this morning. But we're really focused on creating a unique experience for every member that comes to our site with really relevant content. We spend a lot of effort on algorithms and data science um, and some, some manual curation and editorial to make sure our members get a great experience. We have a couple avenues to target content. We look at a user's profile. And so an example here is you know, an early startup executive. We may show very different content than someone that's a technology executive at a mature company. We're also looking at what your network is doing. And that adds a lot of riches, riches to, the, to the, the feed you see on LinkedIn. And, and finally, we look at what people like you are doing on LinkedIn, what types of content they're consuming. And we can surface that to you. So this relevance is a really important part of what we're doing. And we've really extended this relevance to our advertising products. I won't spend too much time here, but you heard about our influencer program uh, earlier. And so we've, we've created this product platform. And I heard some product feedback at the, the earlier session on how to improve it. But we've created this original content. And the content has the right tone for LinkedIn and what our professionals are looking for. This has really anchored our content strategy. And then I'd say the last trend that's, that's, that's really been a big focus for us has been mobile. 
And it's, there's no secret that the industry is shifting towards mobile, and it's certainly true for LinkedIn. So we, we have an organized mobile team, and about uh, a few months ago, we released the third version of our mobile app. It's a great app. If you haven't downloaded it, you should try it out. It's gotten rave reviews, four stars in the App Store. But this allows our, our users to engage with us on the go. And the shift we've seen on mobile uh, has been pretty pronounced. So if you look at, uh, this is some recent data we reported. In Q2 of this year, a third of our members came through mobile applications, either through uh, the mobile phone or through a mobile tablet device. And this is up from 20% a year ago. So it's growing very quickly and it's going to continue to grow. And there's some differences in behavior on mobile users versus desktop users. One big difference is they're very heavy content consumers. When you open the mobile app, the default experience is our news feed. And you've heard about you know, snackable content, and we'll talk about that later. But mobile users have short bursts of time to engage with apps. Um, and it's perfect to get content, the right content in front of them. Another part of our mobile product offering is Pulse. This is uh, one of the top newsreader apps. It's a company we acquired. They were a startup here in Silicon Valley, only a few years old. But we acquired them um, because they've got a tremendous mobile product. It allows you to customize the type of news you want to see. It's aggregated content. We're migrating this into the rest of LinkedIn's content ecosystem. But just in a, a few short years, we're seeing hundreds of millions of views of content on the Pulse platform, which is pretty amazing for a startup that's only a few years old. So that's our overall product strategy as it relates to content ecosystem. Now let's talk about marketing. And one of the things I want to stress is marketing is really a first class citizen at, at LinkedIn. And I'll speak to a little bit more about how that works. But you know, the reason for that is, and in content marketing especially, is you think about LinkedIn's mission, is we want to make our members as productive and successful as possible. And content marketing can play a valuable role in that, right? Content marketing informs, educates, inspires our members. And so we see it as a really valuable tool, which is why we've treated it in special ways in our user interface. And you'll, you'll see some of that in a second. But, uh, but we think this is very, very valuable. And so I'm going to tell a little bit of a story here. Uh, we went back to some of the marketing textbooks to find some good examples of you know, pre-digital era, what, uh, what type of content marketing was out there. Is it a relatively new phenomenon? And some of you may have heard this story before, but it is not. You know, content marketing is hundreds of years old, if not older. And one great example is, is John Deere company. Uh, and when John Deere was started in the 1800s, they manufactured a product that was basically a steel plow blade. And at the time, that was high technology. Uh, today, we don't think anything of it. But John Deere, as an entrepreneur, he spent a lot of time not only building his product, but investing in training the community. So he went out to farms. He instructed farmers on how to be better farmers, how to plant, how to sow, the things that farmers do. Um, he also extended that to content. If you look at uh, the magazine that he created, uh, which is a periodical called The Furrow, Furrow and John Deere still publishes this today, uh, it was really meant, even though it's published by John Deere, it doesn't feel like a sales catalog. It's, it's content that, that helps people do their job better. And so he became a trusted advisor uh, for, for numerous farmers. And as a result, he sold more plows. You know, and today, 200 years later, John Deere still publishes a magazine. It's a $30 billion company. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I, I took a, a, a glance at a recent issue, and it was actually pretty scientific. I mean, they're talking about the science of farming, some of the latest trends. So it was great, great content that's new and interesting. So how does this relate to LinkedIn? So you flash forward to 2013, you know, LinkedIn is now a great platform. And, and uh, Jonathan Lister talked about this earlier, but we are in a professional context on LinkedIn. So what we like to say about LinkedIn is people are coming here to invest their time to make themselves better professionals, right? to learn. And that's, that's very different than some other social properties on the web where you may be going just to spend time, be entertained, that sort of thing. And so um, uh, you know, this is the right context to hit people. So when you think about your content marketing strategies, you don't just want to think about the quality of the content you were producing. You want to make sure you reached people in the right context. Earlier this year, the CMO Council did a study where they surveyed several hundred B2B buyers. Uh, and this is no surprise, but they found that uh, the vast majority of them considered online content to be a very important consideration factor in determining um, which vendors to select as part of a vendor selection process. So it's, 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 it's uh, a very important to be in front of your customers with some sort of content strategy. So let me talk about our products now. Like, How do you get content in front of our LinkedIn members? The first product I want to talk about is our, is our most mature product in this portfolio. It's called Company Pages. Some of you may be using this. And Company Pages came about at LinkedIn 
we originally were just about the profile page for, for members. And what we found is that a lot of people were clicking on the links on people's profiles where, where companies were named, wanting to find more research about that company. So this is what we created these company profiles. This is an early version of a company profile. And as you can see, it's really just aggregated content. There's, there's not really a place for the brand to have any sort of message uh, to their customers. And so we've spent a lot of effort, product effort, over the last year enhancing the company pages. And this is a more recent version. You see Oracle here with their, they're choosing to highlight uh, their uh, America's Cup champion, uh, Team Oracle vote. But this allows brands to take control of their presence on LinkedIn. The early adopters, you know, going back to LinkedIn's job seeker uh, community, were really focused, companies were using this to speak to potential job candidates, talking about why their, their place of businesses is a great place to work, because they know people are on LinkedIn coming to find jobs. Well, now we have a lot of users and members coming to LinkedIn to find content. In fact, that's the majority of our activity. So companies need to leverage this to speak to that audience. I wanted to highlight an example of someone who's done a really great job at this, and that's, that's HP, which if you look at their company page, they have 1.3 million followers, which is tremendous. That's you know, one of the leaders on our, on our platform. And they're putting lots of great content. And they've mixed it up a bit. I mean, they have some content that's targeted at job seekers. But I just looked today, and they've got some recent content. They posted a movie trailer from an upcoming DreamWorks animation movie uh, cartoon. And you know, the, the voiceover on the content was, you know, this DreamWorks used HP hardware, software, servers, and cloud storage to develop this and animate this movie, right? So really highlighting how their products are being used. And so when you look at, uh, we've done some surveys to see you know, what do people think. And they're, they're really reaching out to their brand advocates. Their followers on LinkedIn are much more likely to recommend them than someone that's not following HP. So they've tapped in the community of B2B buyers that are really interested in, in HP's products. And this, in an earlier presentation today, this was mentioned in this study, and I just wanted to put the data in front of you. We've surveyed our members and asked them, why are you following companies? And this was the results. They really are craving content from companies. Everything from product information to, um, we've got events on here, we've got white papers, studies, you know, thought leadership articles. They really want this content, and it's important that you, you speak to them. So when I talk about marketing as a first-class citizen, up until recently, LinkedIn's advertising products were, were segmented. You know, a lot of traditional publishing platforms, you have display advertisements which aren't closely integrated into the, to the site. And I think LinkedIn does a better job than most at that. But with sponsored content, this content is so engaging for our members, we're able to put it directly in the feed. It doesn't detract from the experience, and it provides a much better experience. So that's just an example right there um, of what it looks like. And you know, our flagship product that we've announced just a few months ago, back in July, is called Sponsored Updates. So this lets marketers, such as yourselves, take what they're posting on the companies and then promote this to a targeted audience, uh, basically pay for promotion in the feeds of a targeted audience. And it's, it's been uh, a great success for us so far. We're very encouraged by the results. You know, uh, we have great quality content on the platform. The engagement rates have been, been, been really, really good. And if you, if you look at, um, I kind of zoom in here, you know, although it's marked as sponsored, this is something, this is some Adobe content, this is something that our members want and are interested in. This is why they're engaging with this content. Not just engaging in terms of readership, but they're, they're you know, commenting, following, uh, and sharing this content. And an important part of this, we talked about the transition to mobile, sponsored updates is our way for marketers to reach our mobile audience. This is the, this is the primary way we've been monetizing our mobile app to date. And we've seen even better engagement rates on mobile than on our desktop with this product. So we're, we're really excited about it going forward because it really enhances the member experience. So let me talk about two case studies of, of marketers that are doing a great job in high tech of leveraging sponsored updates. The first is Adobe, which I, I showed a few screenshots. And Adobe is, has run a sponsored update campaign to, to, to build thought leadership in the digital marketing community. So Adobe has a great suite of web optimization products, web analytics products, and they ran a, a targeted campaign to reach those types of professionals on LinkedIn. Uh, and LinkedIn has very specific targeting capabilities, so you can put that message in front of people. And if you look at the types of content they're running, you know, they've got a great survey here which talks about some of the big trends happening in website optimization, which they've surveyed from some of their customers. And so this content is highly engaging. So we did a brand study to look at, you know, for, for people that were exposed to this and people that were unexposed, what do they think about Adobe as a website optimization company? And you can see very strong lift in terms of people's recognition of Adobe as a player in this space, someone that has great products and great leadership. 
Another example is, is HubSpot, and HubSpot is one of the savviest, most sophisticated uh, lead generation, lead marketer companies. They focus on inbound marketing. They're, they're great at content marketing. So they ran a sponsored update campaign for more of a classic demand generation, lead generation case. They're trying to drive people to their products and services. And you can see some of the examples of content they ran here. You know, they had a free template tool that allowed you to create really cool infographics if you want to create good content uh, you know, to post on LinkedIn or other sites. And you know, the feedback we got from HubSaw was very encouraging. Of all the channels they ran this campaign, all the paid, paid lead generation channels, we delivered 400% more volume. So those are just two case studies of sponsored updates. So we talked about company pages, sponsored updates. The last product I wanted to highlight is SlideShare. And for those of you not familiar with SlideShare, this is a company we acquired uh, a little over a year ago. And what they do is they have a website. It's a very easy tool where you can take any form of PowerPoint or presentation, you know, PDF, and you can easily upload it into the SlideShare platform. And then it's hosted on LinkedIn, and you can drive a lot of distribution to it. You know, we, we extract a lot of the content, the metadata, so that it's search engine optimized, so search traffic can find it. And then we've also allowed users to easily share it, right, and view it no matter what type of device you're using, whether it's a mobile device or whether it's a, a desktop device. And finally, we have a companion product for this now where you can run a content ad on LinkedIn where, again, it's another form of native advertising. It doesn't really feel like some sort of display ads, but it's a presentation in an ad unit um, with a snippet of the content. And users find that really engaging and then consume the content. So it's another way to get your message out on LinkedIn. So SlideShare is something we're, we're very excited about. And we want to tie the products much more closely together with the rest of LinkedIn. So another point that I, I mentioned earlier, but I want to spend some more time on, was just the power of social proof. So when you think about traditional advertising, you know, the celebrity endorsement was a big thing, right? You would have some celebrity endorsing your product, and that's how people really it would change the perceptions of people about that product. Now the power is in people's network, right? Who they're connected to on LinkedIn, the professionals that they trust and admire. What are they talking about? What are they consuming? And there's other professionals on LinkedIn. And so with all of our, our, our units and activities on LinkedIn, we include a, a like, comment, and share button. And this includes our sponsored content. And one of the things that's really surprised me is the amount of engagement with these features for our sponsored content. People liking, commenting it. Again, this goes back to marketing being more of a conversation as opposed to preaching to an audience and trying to sell them a product. So it's not uncommon to see a sponsored update with hundreds of comments on it or hundreds of likes. And the great thing about our platform is when someone engages with this, that activity or that piece of content then goes back into the feed for all these other, the other members that the user is connected with. So it's a really powerful way to amplify content. And so I think you heard earlier about some of our influencers and how they're writing content, taking strong positions, writing really interesting content. And that's all done to, to encourage this type of activity. And then I think that the targeting piece is the other piece that is very important for LinkedIn. I think in the B2B space, we by far have the best company targeting, professional targeting on the web. And there's a reason for that. Um, and it's because the LinkedIn profile has evolved. Now it's people's professional identity. I remember five or six years ago, people, uh, a lot of people would, would create LinkedIn profiles and identities once they would set it up, they wouldn't really engage with it. Or they would only do it and update it when they were looking for a job. So when I used to work at Google, the easiest way to find out if someone was looking to leave the company was you'd see if they'd been active on LinkedIn, how they updated their profile. And LinkedIn made it great because they would notify you when your friends were making changes to their profile uh, by default, and it still does. Uh, and that was a dead giveaway someone was looking to leave. Now that's, that's really changed. If you look at LinkedIn today, because it's people's professional identity, people update LinkedIn all the time. I mean, it's almost a real-time view of, of what someone's professional uh, demographic. So when people switch jobs, they update their LinkedIn profile. When they get promoted, they update their LinkedIn profile. When they have a major accomplishment or achievement at work, they update their LinkedIn profile. Because they know that our people search is very powerful. When you're in a business context researching someone you're going to meet with, or a prospective customer or employer, you look at their LinkedIn profile to get an assessment. So people have a huge incentive uh, to keep this up to date. As a result, our targeting is incredibly accurate, right? So we're not going to target people that are at the wrong companies or that have moved way on because we know where they are right now. And this has been a great asset for us, and we're going to continue to invest in it. So I, I wanted to leave you with four, uh, four tips for your content marketing strategies on LinkedIn. And these are just observations we pulled together. We looked at all the companies that have been running content on our platform. 
We've seen what's worked, what hasn't worked. Uh, Dan Roth talked about some examples of what doesn't work really well. So I want to highlight some things that work really well, especially with our sponsored content. The first tip, and this goes back to LinkedIn's mission as a company, you know, we're trying to make our members more productive and successful. And you're, the content that works the best on LinkedIn is content that makes people more productive and successful. So think about that in that context. When you're creating content, you want to make the audience you're speaking to uh, inspired, educated. You want them to learn something. So here's an example where Intuit ran a recent promotion where they're targeting female entrepreneurs. You know, Intuit has a suite of, of business software for small businesses. And so the content they were speaking to was how to manage work-life balance if you're a female entrepreneur. Uh, for a company, right? And this is really interesting content for those types of people. It's not directly related to what Intuit's doing, um, but they have a strong voice in this, a strong opinion. And it, you know, down the road, people will think of Intuit much more favorably in terms of their product set. So this is definitely the first verse takeaway and probably the most important. The second piece of advice is you should be the editor of content. You don't have to originate all of your content. It can be very time consuming. Uh, somewhat expensive and difficult to get high quality content. So what many companies are doing is they're leveraging other people's content. There's a treasure trove of content out there on the web. A lot of it doesn't have great distribution. When they put it on our platform, it does get great distribution. And so here's an example with uh, Lenovo. There's uh, the Warden School of Business in Pennsylvania. They have a, uh, a series of content that they produce. You know, and a lot of this is offered by their professors. Uh, and it's backed by research, and it's really great high-quality content, just like the Harvard Business Review, probably less well-known. And what Lenovo's chosen to do is, in this example, is they've taken some of that content about this, this Wharton article about how social and mobile is changing business and how they're reacting to it, and they're taking that and they're syndicating it out to their followers and to their audience and sponsoring it, right? Because this is really useful content. So you can be an editor. You don't have to originate all your own content. Uh, this is one of the most overused terms on probably the content marketing internet, uh, snackable. But in terms of making it snackable, when you think about the trends in, in content consumption, again, I talked about mobile and short bursts of activity. One of the problems here is you know, if, if you're in Starbucks waiting in line, you're on your cell phone on LinkedIn, you don't want to read a 20-page white paper. right? Uh, but you're happy to read a, a short article that summarizes what's in that 20-page white paper. Right? And then there can be a link to a detailed white paper that you can read at your leisure uh, you know, when you're back at your desk or your desktop. So you should really create a snackable. And that means content should be easy to digest, easy to understand, and easy to share. And what we've seen is when content is really you know, encapsulated like that, it drives a lot more sharing activity and a lot more consumption. And remember, people, the social proof element of content marketing, people are sharing content because they want to look smart. Right? And so if your content's easy to digest and understand, and it's great stuff, and, and it's, it's easy to, it's you know, short and contained, they will share that with their network. So making it snackable is very important. And the last piece is you should really value who you're targeting and who's consuming your content. We've seen a lot of content marketers, they focus almost exclusively on the high level metrics. So what's the raw number of shares I'm getting? What's the raw number of views? What's the raw number of engagement? And they're not looking at who's engaging with that content, right? Because there's different value. You want to maximize the impact of your content. You want to get in front of the right people. So it's OK to be very focused in your targeting of your content to get your content in front of the right people, because that's who you really want to see who values the, the content. Um, and so as you're crafting your content, you want to make sure you customize it to different audiences. So for instance, if you're speaking, your company may sell to a variety of different departments in an organization. But if you're selling to HR professionals, you want HR-friendly content, and that should be targeted to HR people. If you're selling to IT decision makers, you should have IT-friendly content. That should be targeted IT decision makers. So valuing the who is, is, is very important in getting the best ROI out of the platform. And my last slide here, I want to talk a little bit about B2B in general. LinkedIn, you know, I'm on the product side. One of the big focus areas for us in 2014 is going to be a, a more comprehensive, more integrated B2B offering. We have a, a number of point solutions, which do a great job at certain things. But I think we've heard feedback from some of our clients that they would like us to do more in this area and be involved in more aspects. So just to touch on some of these things briefly, you know, in terms of the targeting component, one of the things we're testing right now is a data management platform that lets companies such as yourselves, if you have custom audiences you want to target, you'll be able to, to upload that into LinkedIn and leverage our member base and target those people on our platform. So that's something we've just started to, to pilot. In terms of attribution, B2B sales cycles are very long and complex in some cases, and so attribution is very difficult. 
one of the areas of attribution we really want to focus on, working both with third parties and LinkedIn itself, is what value is this content marketing and this engagement driving? Does it result in more leads? Does it result in more sales? That's ultimately what you care about. And sometimes that takes a long time. And remember, going back to the farming analogy, a content marketing strategy is oftentimes like planting seeds. You're not only talking to current customers, but prospective customers that may be several months or even years away from a sales cycle. So as you're developing that conversation, we want to let you measure that. The third piece on here is lead capture. And I have been, this is a particular interest to me. I, my, my past job, I was a B2B buyer. I was buying technology. And what amazed me is a lot of companies have really great content. And you would go to their site to consume it. And you'd be confronted with this 20 page or 20 field lead capture form with every required field. Uh, and if you've ever filled out one of those, it's infuriating. Uh, and you just want to get to the content. And it, it actually kind of rubs you the wrong way as a customer because uh, oftentimes you just bounce off the page. So we think we can really streamline this. One of the things we've been testing is a LinkedIn autofill button, which we have on some of our own pages today. With one click, someone who's a LinkedIn member can populate a lead form with all the attributes from their, from their LinkedIn profile. So this has been early. We just turned this on. But we're really encouraged by the results. So really streamline it. But again, lead capture, I think there's been a lot of focus on buying leads. And remember, content marketing is about a conversation. So we want to help people identify what we call the hand raisers. So people that may be interested in your product, um, you want to develop the relationship until the right time to capture that lead information. You don't necessarily want to have it happen right up front. So we want to invest in tools to make that process more seamless. And then finally, personalization is a big theme. I talked about personalization in terms of our platform, in terms of the content consumption. So the feed is very unique and driven by personalization algorithms. We think the same can be applied to content marketing. So customizing creatives, customizing the message, not only based on who a customer is, but where they are in the life cycle process, what sort of engagement they've, they've generated with you. And this will be a big focus. So again, this is very forward thinking for 2014. One of the great things about these events is we certainly want to partner. I know none of you have been early adopters of some of our products, have helped us validate some of the product concepts. And I think in the course of the next year, we'll be reaching out to, uh, to continue to work with you on that. But we're really excited about what's, what's ahead. Thank you.